Here we are in March in the growing dome, and March is the turnover time in the growing dome because all our winter crops, our faithful winter crops like arugula, lettuce, Swiss chard, they're all going to seed. But you can actually eat eat the flowers and eat the leaves, and at some point they just get too leggy and stringy, and so you pull them out. And but it's not time to plant our spring crops yet our summer crops because uh, the soil is too cold okay. and seeds need a certain soil temperature in order to germinate and cool weather crops can germinate with a lower soil temperature than the heat loving crops. So uh, what we have is now a change over time between all our winter crops and we have another set of cool weather crops which we call a catch crop. And so there are also, those are things like lettuce, uh, spinach, kale, Swiss chard, all those things. Those come on really fast. And then uh, at the end of March or early April, that's when we sow our seeds for our summer crops because then the soil is warmed up enough. Because if you sow the seeds now for your summer crops, the seeds would not germinate, they're just rotting the ground. So that's why we're doing this little cat crop of winter cool weather seeds. So here we go. All right. So now we're going to show uh, sowing seeds in this bed. And the first thing we have to do is prepare the soil. Very, very important. And so in terms of soil prep, the order that I do this in is firstly I take out the weeds, and then I prepare the soil. And my favorite weapon for soil preparation is the sieve. And this is a magnificent machine and we'll just take out these weeds real quick and there's two types of weed there's a perennial weed and an annual this is an annual weed and uh, the perennial weeds have really deep roots and they crawl all over so you've got to do your best to uh, get all those out for sure and here's some here's some other type of weed grass See, we've got some grass, but that doesn't have a lot of creeping roots, so I think that'll be fine. And then the final weed is a dandelion, and they have really, really deep roots, and if you leave the root in, they'll come back. So what you got to do is, look at that dandelion root. But you can uh, make dandelion tea out of that. You can dry it and make tea or dandelion coffee. So. Try and get all the root out when you get rid of those. So here we go. So now we've got rid of the weeds. And so what we're going to do is we're going to sieve the soil in order to make a fine type of soil for sowing the seeds. So here is the sieved soil. You see how nice that is? Uh, when you're sowing seeds, you have to have a very fine soil. Most people just go and buy potting soil, but I prefer to sieve the existing soil. It's got lots of nutrients. And then the, the part that I don't use, I just throw back lower down in the soil because all we're trying to do is create fine soil to sow the seeds in because you can't have seeds fighting against clods of dirt or little chunks of organic material. So there's the soil ready to be sown the seeds on it. Okay. So this is the kind of um, flat arrangement where I sow individual large seeds like peas and beans and they are individually sown in these compartments and when they get to a certain size then you can transplant them into the bed. The flat below it is um, what I use for seeds that I'm going to transplant later. And so all the members of the cabbage family transplant really well, um, lettuce, those kind of things. But there are certain seeds that do not transplant well, and those are the root crops. You never want to transplant root crops. They will die and fail. So carrots, turnips, um, um, things like that, uh, beet, uh, they all go into the soil where you're going to finally put them. And you can either sow them in rows, or we can sow them 
scattered around. But we have to not sow too thinly, uh, too thickly actually. Most people sow seeds too thickly and we'll be demonstrating the correct thickness of sowing seeds. So in this bed we're going to sow a couple of rows of carrots and what I'm doing is raking the soil because this doesn't need sieving and then all the big clods I just put on one side and um, the rows of carrots usually we do about six inches apart and what I do is I, I make a slight groove in the soil about half an inch and then the important thing is to sow the seeds at the right thickness. So let's have the carrot seeds. So now we're, we're going to be working in some, uh, some compost into the soil before we sow these seeds. And we just do that with a little rake and rake it down evenly all over the bed. And any club clods of dirt we're just going to get rid of. So here we are, two little strawberries. So now we're ready to sow the seeds. So we're creating a little group here. And carrot seeds are some of the finest seeds we have. Can you see that? So carrot and lettuce, very tiny seeds, very easy to sow too thickly. So the way I do it is I always put the seeds onto my my hand and then I get a pinch and I'm going to sprinkle these along the whole row. So one pinch of seeds is going to be enough to do that whole row. And so you're going to sprinkle as you go and essentially most people sprinkle too slowly and so they get the seeds too thick and so you have to do it at a certain speed like that. See, so that's that row done. So I'll do another one in case you didn't catch it. Okay, so we take a pinch of seeds. So all you need is one pinch and then we just sprinkle them as we go and that's it. That's that row of carrots sown. And see how many seeds I've got left? So I've got half the handful still left. Alright. And now uh, we're going to sprinkle some potting soil on top of the seeds rather than trying to cover up the, uh, we'll, we'll sprinkle this on, on top of the seeds so that they have an easy job of making their way to the surface. And then the final thing is to give them a nice thorough watering. So we use a watering can with a rose, what's called a rose, to water it, so it evenly waters the seeds. And the important thing with seeds is to keep them wet all the time, because if you let them dry out, they're going to die. So, so for, for the first week, they have to come in almost every day and just make sure they're moist. But once the seeds are established, um, they won't dry out. Now I'm going to show you this flat here. And this is some seeds I broadcast in this flat. And you see how, how densely they are together? This is a really good density in order to transplant. Because if, if they have enough space and the roots can develop adequately, so when you transplant them they have a really good root system. But if they're too close together, all the roots are intertwined, they compete for, with each other for moisture and nutrients so they never grow as strongly. And also, um, when you pull the little seedlings apart, the roots are so um, intertwined with each other, they get damaged uh, very easily and the plants are not healthy. So this is about the right density to transplant. So we'll show you broadcasting the seeds uh, to, to um, produce a density uh, somewhat like this. So now we're going to sow a, a small row of spinach seeds just to demonstrate. And if you look at spinach, they're a lot, lot bigger than the carrots. So two things. When the seeds are bigger, you can actually sow them individually and decide where you want each plant rather than sowing a row. 
And secondly, you have to sow them a little bit deeper than uh, shallow seeds. So small seeds, you sow about a quarter of an inch, and bigger seeds, you sow about half an inch. So what I'm going to do is going to take a pinch and try and drop the in individual seeds as I go along. And what this does is, again, it creates a healthy, strong plant. And an extra two or three minutes at this stage of sowing the seeds with the correct spacing um, will pay endless dividends uh, over the next three months when you start to grow and harvest. So you see in that row, see how many seeds I've still got left. And it's always tempting to sow more because, you know, it's hard to trust that these tiny little things are going to turn into a huge plant like this, but guess what? They are. And I think that's the main thing when sowing seeds is to uh, sow them the right density and, and you right, uh, get right from the get-go. So this time I'm going to put potting soil on top of these seeds and that contains a little bit of fertilizer plus some vermiculite which helps to keep the moisture uh, around the seeds. And so um, then we'll, we'll put that over and then simply water thoroughly and we're ready to go. I sometimes pat it down a little but it's not totally necessary. So there we are, watering the little planties. Cool. They'll be happy, happy. Very soon. The onions are doing great, aren't they? So now I'm going to sow some mescaline mix. And this is a blend of uh, different types of lettuce, Simpson, red salad bowl, oak leaf, with arugula and radicchio. And so what I'm going to do is to sow seeds over this whole area, and then as the uh, lettuce and the different mixtures come up, cut them in turn across the whole width of the bed, and then by the time I've reached here, these will have regrown, and uh, it's called cut and come back. So you can uh, you can do that. So here's again a very a very uh, small amount of seed, and this will probably that seed will probably do half of this bed. So what I do again is I just sprinkle it over the whole bed, and when, once I've sprinkled it, then you can do it this way, then I cover it with dirt and, uh, and water it. And so that's all ready to be covered with potting soil and, and then ready to be watered. And what I like to do sometimes is just sprinkle the potting soil on top and then firm it down and water it. So the next thing we're going to sow is peas and as you notice these are huge seeds and what I like to do is do in an in individual compartment in the tray and then when they're about two inches high I transplant them into the soil. But there is another way to do it, where you can plant them in what are called peat pots, which actually disintegrate. So they germinate in the tray, and then when they're about big, this big, the roots are starting to come out of the bottom of the peat pots, and they can actually penetrate the peat. And so you can use the peat pots, just plant the pots directly in the soil once the seeds have grown to a certain size, and that saves a lot of transplanting. And uh, so that's another way to do it.